Boy, oh boy, did we have a stage today in the Giro d'Italia. Stage 14 was the individual time trial uh, from Cornelia, Corneliano to Valdobbiadene. Sorry, my Italian is not what it used to be. Uh, people Ganna won. Uh, big surprise that. Maybe not, not so much, but obviously it was a bit hillier than other TTs he's won. Dennis, McNulty, De Hent. Now, I don't really care about the rest that much, but these two here, Bannon, McNulty, and Thomas again upload to Strava. And we've got some ridiculous numbers that Velon have shown from people Ghana. So first, we're going to go into uh, Ghana's stats, um, what I can derive from that. And then we're going to go into McNulty's and Degent's. And from that, I hope to be able to show you the sort of ride that Ghana did, because obviously I don't have a Strava file, but we can we can get some things. So this is a Velon. If you don't know what it is, uh, they basically have loads of power data that the Giro um, records and they write an article every day. A lot of it, they try and avoid giving out big power secrets, so it's not too intriguing, but it can give you a really interesting uh, sort of, I guess, insight into what some parts of the race are like. So this is people Gardner. So the beginning, which we'll see in a minute, is uh, is slightly uphill. So here's the here's the um, the profile, and you can see the first intermediate time check was after seven kilometers. So so up here, um, it was this was like a half percent you know, false flat, and then it's a decent climb. So obviously, Ghana's going to be going pretty hard up there. Um, but Ghana did that in 40 kilometers an hour, 11 minutes, 510 watts. That's ridiculous. That's stupid watts. Like, obviously, 6.2 for 11 minutes is like nothing that crazy, to be honest. But 510 watts is is bonkers. Um, and obviously, people, the next question is, well, what did he average overall? And that's what I'm going to try and figure out now. I think I should be able to roughly get ballpark figure um, based on the other p other riders and their watts per kilo, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so first, we're going to go on to Brandon McNulty's power file. And actually, we'll, we'll actually, no, first, we'll just look at the intermediate split. So you can see here, the first intermediate split was at seven kilometers. Uh, Ganna beat Rowan Dennis by like a second. And then McNulty was pretty close, like only like four seconds off. Um, so to be fair, like not, not crazy different. Um, and then obviously as it went on, onto the faster part, uh, the flatter part, Gan really, uh, extended his advantage over McNulty, um, and De Gent. Uh, so overall, if you look at De Gent, he was just pretty well paced all round. He didn't have crazy splits at any point, but just, you know, decent times. If anything, he went off quite hard and then sort of faded a little bit. Um, so yeah, we'll get into Brandon McNulty's power file. Uh, so we'll just go the overall. Always forget to give these lads kudos. So 400 normalized for 48 minutes. I'm not 100 sure that's correct because he had some times when he didn't wasn't riding and Strava source, which which is what the extension is, um, doesn't do normalized power too much. If there's a bit of uh, you know if he's not pedaling. Um, so we'll get into the the actual uh, analysis here. So this is the uh, the uh, parkour as we saw before. Uh, 408 watt average normalized 414. Which is, which is, which is big. Uh, 5.8 watts per kilo for 46 minutes is a very high level performance on a TT bike. Again, weights, you know, take them with a pinch of salt. Could be half, half a little, a little bit too light, a little bit too much. That says UCI Pro there. That's absolute bollocks. Um, that's world tour. Um, but so yeah, we'll, we'll look at the first, the fastest part here. So this is the first six kilometers, and Magnolti's doing uh, 422 watts. Uh, which I don't know why it's being so annoying. There we go, 6.2 watts per kilo um, for the first seven minutes, which is what Velon said. So Velon must have a similar weight to us. Um, and if we look at the first seven seven kilometers, uh, this might be a little bit past the checkpoint, but more or less, um, we can see that he did uh, again about, oh, sorry, this bit at the beginning is annoying me. He did again six six 6.2 watts per kilo. On this climb here though, he really razzed it properly hard. Um, he did 511 watts with seven and a half watts per kilo for four minutes, which on its own is pretty impressive. But because it's 12%, it makes sense to dig that deep um, because the amount of time that you could lose there is, is very significant. So, I mean, if you're thinking Ganna's doing seven and a half, then wow, he's doing close to 600 watts up there. Like, that's ridiculous. Um, as you can see here, like Ganna is very, very close um, to McNulty, actually beaten. So Ganna is going crazy fast up there. Uh, so yeah, then after this, it's a slight downhill, so you th expect them to take it a little bit easier from the top of this climb down here, but not that easy. Um, still 365 watts because it's only negative 2%, so that's actually, you know, often people I think go too easy on the downhills, but these pros are pretty good at it. Then we've got this flat section here, which is like 422 watts um, 
for 12 minutes. Um, so that's, you know, I think where Gano would be doing, you know, maybe 460 here and really driving advantage. Um, and then up the spinal, well, sort of the first part of the final climb, 5%. So again, the watts aren't as spiked as a 12%. So 12% it was 7.5 watts per kilo for 3 minutes 40. Here, um, it was only only uh, 6.4 watts per kilo for 4 minutes 40. So slightly less, but again, it's faster and obviously air resistance isn't linear. So it makes sense to go really hard on the steep sections where there's obviously less air resistance and where you can gain more time than going hard on the on the flat sections or the downhill sections where air resistance is more of a more of an issue. Um, this this last part of the of the climb, sorry, I click that, uh, is about six point four as well. So if if we do it all together, it will be a, you know around six point two watts per kilo, six point four watts per kilo here uh, for eight minutes, and that pretty much is the end of the TT. Um, it's a downhill run and then a sprint to the line, and that's pretty much it to be honest. Um, so that you know, I guess that's you could see the the end of the the end of the uh, TT is there because on this part here, you know, he's doing 260 watts. He's, he's aero tucking at 66k an hour down here. Um, well, it does look like he's pedaling to be fair. So he, he's definitely not aero tucking, but this part here he is. And then it's just, you know, the final kick to the line was something like 700 watts, um, or 800 watts for 30 seconds. It says up there. So that's probably what it was. Um, you can see the peak powers here. So, you know, if we're thinking Brandon McNulty is doing 430 normalized for the 43 minute effort, then you can expect Ghana to do, and he beat him, and is obviously significantly heavier. Uh, so as you can see here, a minute, I mean, Ghana's doing 460, isn't he? I mean, um, we can look at the Ghent, uh, slightly less aerodynamic, maybe slightly heavier as well. Um, I'd say, you know, maybe three, four kilos heavier than Brandon Minolsi would be. Um, and he does 430 watts. So we'll, we'll go into his data as well, which is always interesting to see how different people pace it. Um, so again, the first part, uh, 412, so similar watts, but slightly less watts per kilo for Thomas de Ghent. Um, Brandon McNulty was doing 4.2. Then same, 7.3 on the climb here, 7.5 for Brandon McNulty. That's pretty much the same. Um, so again, it seems like most people have the pacing correct. And down here, again, you can see de Ghent did go harder here, went 400 watts down there, while McNulty was 360, so maybe that's potentially where he gained a bit of time, because on the intermediates, he wasn't actually that quick. And down here, he's again doing more watts, but similar watts per kilo, 430. Um, and then up this final climb, I assume he's doing 6.6. .6. So again, slightly more watts on the climb. So I think actually in some ways, again, pace this probably better than other people because he did go slightly hard on the climb. And down here, he seemed to really chill, cruise out. And I think actually in some ways, him undercooking the first part meant that he could go really, really hard towards the end where, you know, it's obviously steep. And I think in some ways, he, he probably on the downhill, I would assume... He still did a lot of watts on the downhill, though. I, I thought he would have had less, but he's he's just kept it well. I think the beginning bit, he really managed to save himself. And then the sprint to the line, again, is about 800 watts at 30 seconds. So all in all, again, 6.1 watts per kilo for 44 minutes. And that, I guess, shows you the difference in aero. Um, normalized 440. That's big, isn't it? That's really big. Normalized 440 for 43 minutes is, is crazy big. Um, and I think that shows you that Ghana, obviously... Maybe similar aerodynamically to De Ghent, because I don't think De Ghent is the most aero human in the world on a TT bike. Like, Ghana is very aero for his weight, but obviously he just weighs a lot. So maybe similar watts, but I still think probably another 20 watts and you're getting close to Ghana's file. If you think, like, Ghana did 6.2 for the first bit, so 5.10. So then if you assume for the rest of it, I mean, the, the average that De Ghent did, to be fair, for this was, like, um, if we get the actual part, I think it was, like, yeah, like 5. No, I don't know why it's, it's... Oh, sorry, this is the wrong file. Um, on De Ghent, sorry, it's 440. So you think, you know, potentially uh, Ghana's doing similar watts per kilo-ish, but I'd say probably less, maybe more like 5.5, 5 5.6, .5, which, again, for his watts per kilo um, would be, you know, 460. Um, so, for, sorry, for his weight um, would be about 460 for that sort of watts per kilo, um, if we're thinking that they did similar was speaking for the beginning part and then went on to do the same, um, which is it's just pretty impressive, to be honest. I mean, Ghana doing like 460 for 45 minutes is absolutely bonkers. And to be fair, De Ghent doing 440 normalized is also stupid. Because like, the thing is, you might be like, oh, 440 is like, oh, it's pretty hard, but it's not like off the chart, like six was for 44 minutes, like you'd expect that. But I'm like, but in a TT position, mid-Giro, yeah, the level's higher than I thought, to be fair. The TTers seem to have a really high level, but the climbers don't seem to have a high level. 
So that doesn't really add up. Like the other stage, it was like seven watts per kilo for the last five minutes. And the climb before that was done at six. And the preceding part was like 200 normalized. And I was like, that's not very high level. But then the TT seems absolutely bonkers because Dowsett, if we look at overall, Dowsett at 420, that's some of the best power I've seen from Dowsett for a long time. And he got beat by two minutes by McNulty. So I think the, um, obviously it's a steep climb. Dowsett's not going to do well on a 12% climb. But even so, I think that does show you that the um the waspikilo on the old on the TT bike seems to be really really high. Um, so yeah, there you go. Cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. Um, about power numbers, you can see as you know what people more or less are doing at the top. Apparently, Vanna, someone commented, Vanna did 460 watts for the individual world's TT. So Ganna doing that mid stage, obviously, probably did more watts in the world champs. Probably makes sense. Um, and it's it's pretty incredible. Um, so yeah, cheers for watching and we'll see you in the next one.